Several thousand light years away from the sun, there is a fiery inferno. The surface of a small star is so scorching hot that its heat reduces any celestial bodies in the neighboring parts of space to ashes. It is burning so furiously that it barely remains in its shape. This object is about to explode and the blast is going to produce an incredibly powerful flare. To date, we know just a few such like objects. Unique and dangerous, WR102 is the hottest star in the universe. Cosmo. The first in outer space. Temperatures of any star's interiors are incredibly high. It is hardly surprising as thermonuclear synthesis, that is the main energy source of all stars, can take place only in these extreme conditions. When two atoms of hydrogen merge, they produce an atom of helium and release an electron and several neutrinos. In addition, a great amount of energy is released during the process. Still, the hydrogen-helium synthesis isn't the only process that heats up stars. At higher temperatures, other elements may take part in chemical reactions as well. For example, lithium, carbon or oxygen. In this case, cores of heavier elements are produced, such as sulfur, magnesium or phosphorus. Their charge is higher and they repel each other more robustly. Much more energy is needed to overcome this resistance. When a main sequence star depletes most of its hydrogen supply, it starts to expand and cool off. With time, it ends up as a red giant. It will continue to burn due to thermonuclear reactions of helium transforming into carbon and oxygen. The lighter the star, however, the less time it will continue to burn. Eventually becoming unstable, it sheds its outer layers and goes supernova. This leaves it a white dwarf with no resources to fuel any thermonuclear reactions anymore. With all its energy sources depleted, it is forced to gradually cool off. Interestingly, when the mass of a star is higher than a certain value, heavy thermonuclear synthesis may become the star's main energy source even after all hydrogen has been used up. Such celestial objects are referred to as wolf rayet stars. This class of space objects was discovered back in 1867 by the French astronomers Charles Wolfe and George Rayette. The scientists' attention was caught by anomalously bright emission lines of heavy elements in these stars' spectra. As for the inner makeup of these unusual celestial objects, it was accounted for much later. Stars of this class are generally heavy. They have quite a meager supply of hydrogen and are in the final stages of their evolution. wolf rayet stars are extremely rare. To date, just a few hundred of them have been discovered in our galaxy. As for their overall count in the Milky Way, it is estimated that there can't be over 2,000 celestial objects of this class. wolf rayet stars are subdivided into three main sequences depending on the prevalent element in the spectrum. Nitrogen, carbon and oxygen sequences. Each of them, in its turn, is subdivided into several types. As for the hottest star in the studied universe, it falls into the category of the oxygen spectral sequence ones. The celestial body, which is now known as WR102, was discovered back in 1971. At first, it was mistaken for the optical counterpart of the X-ray source GX3 plus 1. However, further observations revealed that there were two completely different objects. According to data acquired thanks to spectral analysis, the discovered star had unusually bright oxygen lines in its radiation spectrum. Thus, in 1982, WR102 and four more bright stars became the first to form a new class. Spectral analysis showed that the star's surface temperature reaches over 210,000 Kelvin. This makes WR102 approximately 36 times as hot as our Sun. The luminosity of this scorching hot object is unbelievable. 
It is estimated at over 380,000 times that of the Sun. WR102 lies about 10,000 light years away. The star is located in the part of the sky with the constellation Sagittarius. Incidentally, in spite of its exceptionally high luminosity, it can't be seen with the naked eye as it is too far away from us. WR102 currently belongs to the extremely rare star class W02, containing great amounts of oxygen and almost no hydrogen. It mainly relies on the merging of heavy cores of such elements as neon, carbon and oxygen as its sources of energy. To date, only nine objects of this class have been discovered, with four of them located in the Milky Way and the other five in other galaxies. There are two factors that make oxygen spectral sequence stars rare. Firstly, there are very few of wolf Rayet stars around because only stars with a mass not less than 40 solar masses are potential candidates to become ones. Secondly, this class represents the final stage of evolution of stars of this type. The stage may last anything from a thousand to ten thousand years, which is mere seconds in astronomical terms. Being of comparatively modest dimensions, WR102 is notably quite a dense star. With its radius measuring just 58% that of the Sun, its mass on the other hand is estimated at 15 to 18 solar masses. On its birth it is thought to have been as heavy as 40 to 60 solar masses. Still, the high temperature and robust chemical reactions in the star's interior cause an exceptionally powerful stellar wind, whose particle's velocity is over 5,000 km per second. It takes WR102 just a few months to lose one Earth mass worth of material on account of its stellar wind. At this rate of particle emission, the star is going to lose one Sun mass worth of material in the course of 10,000 years. There are no planets orbiting WR102, but it is shrouded in a gas envelope. Not dense and exposed to powerful ultraviolet radiation and strong stellar wind, the envelope gets contracted and ionized, which sustains its elaborate structure of protuberances and arches all around the star. According to a proposed theory, the gas cloud around WR102 may probably be remnants of the former hydrogen outer layer of the star. Another theory maintains that the cloud came to be as a result of the particle flow emitted by the star. WR102 is not the only outstandingly blistering place in the universe. For example, WR142, WR30A and WR93B, as well as the central star in the Bug Nebula NGC 6302, are as hot as around 200,000 Kelvin. Some white dwarfs may have almost the same surface temperature. However, all these are no match to neutron stars. When neutron stars are born, their temperatures may reach a staggering 100 billion Kelvin. Active neutrino emissions cool them off comparatively rapidly. But either way, the surface temperature of any neutron star is never less than a few hundred thousand Kelvin. As for their cause, they must, admittedly, be hotter still. Having said that, it is highly improbable that the ultimate temperature record is ever going to be beaten. According to today's cosmological concepts, the temperature of the universe at the moment of the hypothetical Big Bang was approximately 1.4 times 10 to the power of 32 Kelvin. A fundamental physical constant, this value is referred to as the Planck temperature. Contemporary physics is not capable of defining a substance of a higher temperature, as physical laws are distorted beyond any recognition in such incredibly harsh conditions, quite beyond our imagination. Getting back to WR102, judging by the data we have on stellar evolution today, this star is in its autumn years now. As opposed to main sequence stars, wolf rayet stars do not expand in their final stages of life. Their substantial mass holds all the star's material together in a dense and hot ball. However, after losing a lot of its mass through stellar wind, the object will eventually get destabilized. 
If current estimates are accurate, WR-102 appears to be ready to go supernova at any point in the next 1,500 years. Bearing in mind that the distance between the star and the Earth is 10,000 light years, it is highly likely that the event has already taken place. A supernova would have been accompanied by an extra powerful gamma ray flare. Fortunately, our planet is too far away to suffer any pernicious effects of this dangerous emission. WR-102 is comprised of rather heavy chemical elements and even iron. Its later evolution will force it to contract to a critical point. The great explosion bringing the star's life cycle to a close will unleash processes of robust proton and neutron capture. This way still heavier elements form, including transuranium ones. Eventually, WR-102 will be replaced by a neutron star, a celestial body unbelievably hot and dense. The former star's outer layers, disrupted by the explosion, will form a nebula. Slowly cooling off, it will give off heat to the space around it. Many billions of years later, this material will be able to form a new planetary system. This is the way the large-scale evolution of the universe occurs. Supernova events release amounts of new elements, enabling new planets, asteroids and comets to get born. These astronomical bodies form elaborate systems bound by gravity. The elements making them up mutually react to produce infinite diversity of chemical compounds. That is why the cognition of the universe is really and truly quite endless.